Well, first things first, welcome to Mainline Baits Carp TV. You join me here at the very popular Linear Fisheries. And we've had a good look round, and I think I'm gonna settle on St. John's Lake. And that is the perfect place to give you my five top tips on spod mixes. So let's finish loading the barrel up and get the kit round there. Well, I was just about to give you tip number one. I was in a little corner peg and it just didn't feel right. So I came for a walk and found a lot of fish and guess what, a vacant swim. So quickly on the barra and now I'm in position two. So I thought I'd run you through tip number one, which is getting the best out of your prepare particles. Now, these mainline jars of nutty hemp and tares are freshly prepared particles. They're already packed with fantastic attraction from the hemp, the tares, the crushed nuts. But I want to enhance that even more. I want to get the absolute best out of that nut and the hemp. And as you can see, we've got some liquid in here. Now this didn't come off the shelf like this. I've actually added this at home. And guess what? It's totally free, just tap water and then let the natural sugars from the tigers and the hemp come out and enhance that liquid. It is so important. This here now is fermented hemp, tigers and tares and peanuts. So yeah, this is what I always do. It's not gonna happen overnight. Fermentation takes weeks. I sometimes do this a month in advance and trust me, when you have a little taste of this, it is like nectar and I do it all the time. I just want to spot it out there. So yeah, I'll tell you what, that tastes. It like hits the back of your, your back of your tongue and just oh, it's no good in here. It needs to go out in the lake. So let's get some spoms out. Right, tip number two on spod mixes is understanding which baits to keep wet, i.e. our tiger nuts, our nutty hemp and tares, and our boilies, and which baits to keep dry, and in this case, our pellets. So when I'm constructing a mix, I'm not just throwing it into one big bucket and hoping for the best. You know, there's a little bit of method behind the madness. So first off, I think it's really important to take note that I'm not just knocking up a massive old big 17 litre bucket, you know, I'm knocking enough up for 10 spoms. And I do this every single time I want to spom out, 10 spoms, if I want to do 20 spoms, I'll do enough for that. So I started off with the nutty hemp and tares, which have been soaking for weeks in the water. And now we've got a lovely fermented mix. So a couple of handfuls of that into the mix. I've then added some tiger nuts. Okay, again, they've been soaking in the juices. They've gone lovely and fermented. So a couple of handfuls of that. Sweet corn, it naturally lives in water. So not a problem that going into the mix. Now the boilies, the 10 mil cell, they are dry, but they'll quite happily absorb all that lovely liquid from the nutty hemp and tares, but they're not gonna break down and go mushy like pellet would. Okay, so throw the boilies in there, give them a good half an hour, three quarters an hour, just so them boilies take on some of that really nice sweet liquid from the nutty hemp and tares. Crush a few up along the way, halve a few, pinch a few, whatever. The spot mix is now looking lovely. But when it comes to spomming, 
like I mentioned, I've got wet and I've got dry. So my pellets are already naturally brilliant attractor. If I add them to the spot mix now, they're gonna just literally release all their stuff into the water, go mushy and your spot mix doesn't look nice. It's very heavy, not great. So, handful of pellet into the spot and then a handful of mix. This ensures all the wet particle stays wet, all the dry pellets stay dry and they all do their thing on the lake bed rather than in the bucket. Right, tip number three. Now that bucket of bait I've just knocked up actually holds some very, very good match the hatch hook baits. But as long as they're durable, you know, so things like maize and tiger nuts are perfect for, like I say, hook baits. Another, yeah, got a little bit of OCD about my hook baits. I like to be prepared. And, uh, and what I've done is actually nick some hook baits from the spot mix. And this one here, I've got your very natural tiger nuts. But as you can see, there's plenty of liquid in there. And over time, that's going to enhance and become, make these tiger nuts even better. They're not going to go off. They're just going to ferment even more and become, like I say, really, really attractive. We've got the little black ones as well. These look amazing as a single over a gravel bar if you're stalking some carp. Again, in the juice. And probably my favorite, these are quite unique, the white ones. That's what I'm using at the minute. Perfect little hook baits, again, in the juice. Super important, that. And that leads me nicely to this. My little tiger nut rig. Very simple but again, very effective. Now, to start off with, I took about 13 inches of hybrid stiff, and I peeled back probably five inches to reveal the nice, soft, supple section, which is perfect for making little supple hairs, so my tiger nut on the bottom acts very naturally amongst all the free offerings. And I've done a two-turn whipping knot, just so I can secure where exactly that braid exits the chank of the hook. And I've actually done a knotless knot, five up, three down, to a size six wide gape Kamakura X. Now, I want the X, I want that extra strong reliability, because I am fishing amongst weed, and I want to land every single thing I hook. As you can see, covering the eye, I've got about an inch of small silt shrink tubing. The rig itself is probably six inches long. At this end, I've done a little figure of eight loop knot, and this is covered by my dark matter anti-tangle sleeve, which once pulled over, will secure that in place over the QC ring swivel. All that's left to do is shrink the tubing, but you want to be extremely careful. I've done it plenty of times. You don't see the flame that's overlapping the kettle. You end up burning the rig and starting it all over again. So yeah, be careful with that one. Trust me, I've been there. And at the other end, just to secure the pair in place, a very simple overhand loop knot, leaving probably good half inch of free movement for my tiger nut to work its magic. Little air stop in the end, and that is good to go. Right, tip number four, don't be afraid to change your spot mix to adapt for different situations. Now, all I've done here is add some ground bait and what I can do now is actually ball up my spod mix, whether I want to catapult it in, ball it in, put it into a spom as well. You know, if I put this into a spom, this is going to still go 100 yards out there and I can imitate a solid bag perfectly. This will reach the bottom in a nice solid form and then break down, exposing all the sweet corns, the tiger nuts, all the nutty hemp and tears and the 10 mil boilies in a solid mass on the bottom, just like a solid bag so yeah great little tip that one and if I want to further that on even more uh, just add a lot more water I've actually enhanced the water with a little bit of a uh, fish smart liquid and made myself a nice sloppy spot mix in this bucket here great for clouding up the water and also one of my favorite tactics spotting over zigs so yeah just a little bit of ground bait and I've got two completely different fishing scenarios ground bait balls and a sloppy cloudy spot mix. Right, 
right, tip number five, and this one is super important. So we've already talked about the different sort of particles I use in my spod mixes, the different approaches I do, so putting ground bait in to ball it up, sloppy spod mixes, but a really important one that we haven't talked about is actually getting our bait onto our spot. Now, it's a topic that gets brought up a lot, where do we spod in relation to our fishing rod? So I'm gonna try and break this down as simply as possible so I can guarantee that you guys have got your spod mix on your baited area, on your fishing rods. So let's do a scenario. This is our lovely big gravelly area amongst lots of weed. We're at 20 wraps, it's 10 foot of water. So my fishing rods are at 20 wraps. Um, spod rod, because it's 10 foot, I generally drop that down to about 19 and a half and do several spods at nine and a half. And I'm pretty sure that I've got bait over my rods. But to ensure that I've got bait over my rods, what I like to do, if the spot allows me to, is say, do one of my fishing rods at 20 wraps, another one of my fishing rods at say 19 and three quarters, and another one at 19 and a half. That way my rods are covering that whole area. So if this is my gravel spot, 20 wraps would land at the back of the spot, 19 and a half would sort of land at the front, and the 19 and three quarters should be landing bang in the middle. And I can play with my spod rod as well. You know, if I just hit the clip perfectly every single time at 19 and a half wraps that I mentioned earlier on, with braid, there's no stretch, it's gonna pretty much land absolutely bang central every time. Play with your spod rod. If you're putting 15 spods out and I'm wrapped up at 19 and a half to begin with, with my spod rod, I do five at 19 and a half, take the clip out, reel in two or three foot, pop it back in, do another five. It's landing that little bit shorter. And again, another five spoms later, remove the clip, reel in two or three foot, back in the clip, another five spoms. I'm then feeding that whole area. You know, Mr. Carp can come along, nick a few baits at the front of the spot, happy days, he gets away with it, while the other one's feeding over there and you eventually hook it. So, you know, play with your spot. There is no rule, there's no, you have to spom at 19 and a half if you're fishing at 20 wraps. Play with it as long as your spot allows you to, and trust me, you will catch many more carp than just with the mindset of 15 spoms straight at the same distance. So have a play, don't be scared, and I promise you'll enjoy it and you'll catch plenty more. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up, press the notification button so you know when new videos are coming out. And if you haven't already, press subscribe. Now, we will leave links so you've got lots more videos to choose from just on my left. Hopefully I'll see you soon. Get a few more spums out.